Hello, I'm Alan Trainer, I'm a civil servant as you heard, and I'm speaking on behalf of the both civil service unions, that Civil Service Unite and the Jersey Civil Service Association with Prospect. It was supposed to be a Prospect speaker here, Kevin McElodon, who's the national negotiator for Prospect. He can't make it, um, so it's me. Kevin, give me what he endorsed! I'm pleased to be able to speak because I intended anyway to speak from the floor about the conclusion <coughs> we ought to reach once we've, all had, once we've all had our say. It's my view that we must end this meeting having agreed that we're going to do something about this situation we're finding ourselves in Hooray! and agreeing what that something is. And I'll come back to, the, come back to that at the end. Harking back to the pay negotiations, you remember them in 2009, 2010 or 11. Then as now, they started with an announcement in the Jersey Evening Post that there was to be no pay award for state's employees. Then as now, in September 2009, we arranged a mass meeting here at Port Regent. We had a phenomenal turnout, and it's a nice turnout again tonight, so thank you for being here. A lot of support was engendered at that meeting for our pay group reps. There was a feeling that we really were going to achieve something. We did get sidetracked. Um, Shona took her proposal to debate the matter in the States, resulted in a defeat. The teachers marched, but the march wasn't terribly well supported. And generally, generally all the energy just fizzled out. That must not be allowed to happen this time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This time. This time started with the Treasury Minister again announcing in the Jersey Evening Post at the back end of 2011, before we'd even submitted our pay claims, that there were to be no pay increases for two years. And then we set about engineering the states into removing the monies allocated in the budget for pay. Naturally, we insisted on making our claims and having talks and this time, unlike the last time, our employer, the State's Employment Board, has refused to meet us. Nevertheless, the hard work of our reps has resulted in an offer, and that is one which Civil Service Starside put to our members in that ballot last November. You'll remember our Chief Executive Officer's intervention. He announced over the head of your reps that you should be pressing your reps to ballot like the civil servants are doing. Well, the civil servants voted no. And there's been a deafening silence ever since then from our chief executive on the subject of ballots. The ballot result was pretty well 50-50, with a majority of seven to reject, as employee, as employee relations like to point out to us every time we meet them. But contrast that with our ballots back in the first pay round. Then, as now, we had a derisory pay offer, a pay offer with conditions attached to it, and our members accepted it overwhelmingly. They voted 10 to 1 in favour of accepting that. Contrast that with now. Our employer has managed to transform a traditionally passive and accepting workforce into one that, despite the threats, despite the risks that we know are out there, decided not to accept a derisory pay offer with conditions attached. Our employer's response has been to impose the offer anyway, upon all of you. So, back to where I started. There's something we must do. When civil service staff I balloted, we put in a note with the ballot papers saying that if the result was known, we would go again back to the civil service members to ask them to ballot on industrial action and that we would coordinate that with the other pay groups. It's not something we can do alone, so there's something that must be done. You must all call on your reps to get together to arrange a ballot on taking industrial action as soon as possible and your reps must then coordinate those actions as they see best. If we are going on, this is the only road that's open to us. Thank you.
Thank you, Alan. Um, before I move on,